In this video, I'm going to attempt to give you an entire year of UX. Hey everyone, it's Elizabeth from Designer Up, helping you become a more skillful and mindful designer. This video is going to be jam-packed with amazing resources and knowledge for UX and product designers, so keep watching. For my last video of the year, I'm going to review and wrap up all of the significant things that I've seen happen in UX and product design and all of the things you can look forward to in the year ahead. So what went down? Calendars filled with Zoom talks and workshops. A few years ago, it was just me and a handful of other designers hosting free online webinars in the UX space. Over the past year, this has changed significantly, thanks to a combination of accelerated remote work and so many online communities and designers hosting free and paid events, workshops, live streams, and masterclasses. And there is no end to the incredible value and knowledge that you can gain from these interactive online talks. Some of the most notable ones for me this year happened on ADP list. Their group sessions have been incredible and have covered such a wide range of topics, both broad and deep. Design Buddies has been putting on some amazing events, Philoxy's design community for women. So if you haven't checked those out yet, you definitely should. Explosion of courses and boot camps. One of the topics most dear to my heart is online education. And this past year, we've seen a huge offering of different design programs, courses, and boot camps hit the market. What's wonderful about this is that designers are no longer limited to the one or two big expensive bootcamp programs or the isolated struggle of self-learning. There are so many veteran designers creating real world quality courses and communities to teach you every aspect of design. You are free to choose the type of program and teacher that is best for you. Our designer at product design course became so popular this year because of our mindful design philosophy and the way we teach business and product strategy alongside UX and UI. I've done another video here on the different types of programs, courses, and boot camps out there, so check that out. The rise of mentorship. It has never been easier to find a design mentor to help you at whatever stage of your journey you're in. I highly recommend doing so. And some of the best places to find these are ADP list, Superpeer, private Discord and Slack communities, or LinkedIn. You can also book sessions with me one-on-one -on -one directly for things like portfolio review and creation and career coaching. I also open up my calendar a few times a month for free group sessions, so be sure to join our newsletter to find out when those are. Community. There is so much action happening behind the scenes in designer communities. These channels have an overwhelming amount of activity and resources. Some of my favorites include Slack channels like Designer Hangout and Design Systems, Discords like Design Buddies and Floxies, and private design communities by creators and designers like our Mindful Design Pro group. There are also local and self-organized meetup groups to check out. A competitive and wide open UX job market. As a result of so much access to high quality education, the pool of new design graduates entering the market has increased a lot. And so have the roles and companies looking to match with them. Some designers have expressed that they feel the job space has become a lot more competitive or that it's just been harder to find entry level and junior roles when transitioning. We're doing a lot to help these graduates, including releasing our new job board that's curated with more of these coveted hard to find roles Roles at mission-driven companies, as well as sharing my Notion job tracker for UX and product designers to help make the application process easier and improve your chances without playing the numbers game. I have an in-depth video all about that here. You can find our job board and Notion job tracker on designerup.co. Expanding skill sets. When I started back in the early 2000s, pairing a few colors together with some decent visual design chops were enough to get me hired as a web designer. But as the capabilities of technology have expanded and there are so many more experience points to consider for our users and our teams, our need to understand the full spectrum of human behavior, art, science, and human computer interaction has deepened. This has also given us as designers the opportunity to dive more deeply and specialize in areas that we're most drawn to and skilled at. Some of the areas that are foundational to know as a UI UX designer are the following. Visual design, user research, information architecture, product strategy, project management, 
business acumen, understanding front-end code, human behavior and psychology, storytelling and presentation skills, emotional intelligence, accessibility, workshopping, team dynamics, and leadership. Many designers that have been in the game for a while now know the importance of having a solid understanding of these at least at a high level before you specialize. And this is exactly what we prepare you for in our courses and lessons at Designer Up. UI trends. We've seen all kinds of interesting experimental visual and UI trends happening in interfaces and on landing pages. There have been a lot of hand-drawn illustrations, 3D illustrations, dark design and dark mode, retro style designs, big bold typography, Memphis design style, aesthetic minimalism with lots of soft shadows, high contrast, duochrome, visible outlines and borders, glass morphism, emoji design, diverse stock photos, and mesh gradients on everything. UX trends. In terms of user interaction and experience design, we've seen a couple of things really take shape and come into their own this year. Agile methodologies plus UX. Finding a common ground between the agile engineering process and the iterative approach of user-centered design hasn't always been an easy fit, but with leaders like Jared Spool and others showing us how UX designers and dev teams can play nice and how we can put individuals and interactions over processes and tools, we've seen a meshing of agile and UX come together. Cross-disciplinary and cross-functional team collaboration. There's been a lot of great conversation happening around how to get stakeholder buy-in and working better with marketing, business, and other departments for the good of the user and the business. Usability, accessibility, and inclusion. Finally, becoming more than just an afterthought and rather a proactive endeavor for designers to learn and teams and companies to implement from the start. Advanced micro interactions. Those little trigger feedback decisions that give the user delight and information about what's going on by showing a small change in the interface. These little considerations are so useful to creating delightful products, and we've seen a lot more of these happening throughout our user interfaces. UX writing as an art and a science. We've seen a lot more UX writing positions come to the forefront, taking the technical or functional terminology and infusing it with more friendly human and behavior driven language. Brand transparency. With companies being scrutinized and called out for unsavory business practices, users and customers are holding organizations accountable to share their corporate policies, product proof, and brand purpose. Unified experiences across devices. Things like social authentication, copying and pasting between devices, and biometric logins have become increasingly important and have been dominating the sign-up process and flows and experiences in the apps we use. Super apps, most popular in the Asian market. These are the one-stop shop apps where you can hail a ride, get your groceries delivered, and stream music all at the same time. Workplace trends, design systems, building a source of truth and systemizing and documenting our components and processes for ourselves and our teams have become a central focus and output of our work this year. Workshops and playbooks. Workshops are shortcuts to facilitating effective problem solving for your team and your users. And some of the playbooks by the biggest companies in the game like Atlassian are being shared for free to help you build stronger teams. Mental health in the workplace. Mental health has become a much less taboo conversation with so many designers openly sharing their experiences with imposter syndrome, depression, and anxiety on social media. In our Designer Up Mindful Pro community, we've been doing exercises and having really deep conversations about how to take better care of our mental health. I've also curated a collection of some of my favorite mindfulness and self-help apps on our blog for UX and product designers. Defining and refining remote work. The rapid shift into remote culture saw everything from offices to virtual co-working spaces. As we continue this shift, we are rethinking and reimagining what work-life balance means and how organizations can support this new way of collaborating. Even more confusing titles. Although the mess of titles has not really gotten any better for UX and product designers, or is it UX slash UI, or UI slash UX, or is it UX visual? design. 
I still don't know. What really matters isn't the title, but how we define our roles and responsibilities within our teams and organizations. Entrepreneurship. The creator and startup economy have become more accessible and active than ever, and having a strong personal brand has become essential to having a healthy career in design. Many designers are taking on side hustles, starting their own courses and businesses, and providing immense value to the design community. Social media. From the very contentious which do you prefer posts to the hundreds of bookmarked tweets on UX and startups, there seem to be a lot of advice to sift through. We've seen Twitter threads becoming the new lively spot for designers from every corner of the industry to share their tips, thoughts, perspectives, and memes about the work that they are doing. And Twitter spaces seem to have come right off the heels of the rapid and surprising demise of Clubhouse. LinkedIn has become a hotbed of change as work life has blended more and more topics that were once taboo or delegated to the friend zone only Facebook platforms are now appearing in the work zones too. In regards to things like mental health, parenting, personal failures, and successes, there's a lot of valuable design and career advice happening. It's a great platform to share and support others that's not quite as saturated as Twitter just yet. Instagram and TikTok, the place to go if you want your design news and tips delivered in bite-sized morsels with a side of humor and a fully choreographed dance routine or two. Social media now is all about how you curate your feeds, who you choose to follow, and what you choose to interact with. Our attention is currency, and it dictates the experience and the food for thought that will be fed, so be mindful of your consumption. Podcasts. One of my favorite ways to consume design content is through podcasts. They remind me of tuning into a good radio program and listening into the thoughts and conversations of great minds. Apple Podcasts and Anchor are two great places to search, and some of my favorite podcasts include the Nielsen Norman Group UX Podcast, New Layer by Tanner Christensen, The Designer of Podcast by Yours Truly, The Product Design Podcast by UX Cabin, 99% Invisible by Roman Mars, User Defenders by Jason Ogle, and UI Breakfast by Jane Portman. There'll be more of my favorites listed in the blog post attached to this video. Check the description. YouTube content. One of the things I'm so happy to see are all of the amazing YouTube lessons and tutorials coming out. Some of my really experienced and generous colleagues are coming out with more and more content on YouTube. The process of compiling, organizing, delivering, and revealing our own processes and putting them into a digestible format that we can transfer to others is both a deep learning experience for us and a generous act for others. It's a fulfilling pursuit and I have a lot of respect and gratitude for all of the products product designers slash YouTubers in the space sharing their knowledge. Tools. Figma, Notion, and Webflow are three of the tools whose adoption has grown so much in the past year and increased our productivity and streamlined our workflows. Real-time remote collaboration. As it's been defined, redefined, and refined, companies like Slack, Zoom, Figma, and Miro have really taken this to the next level with live viewing, editing, commenting, messaging, and sharing documents virtually. The sheer amount of attention that the creators of these tools have put into the user experience and listening to our needs as a designer is also a testament to what a truly great user experience can mean. There are also so many smaller tools and SaaS products giving us the means to get our work done better and faster. Some of those include Zeppelin, Framer, Lookback, Flowmaps, Useberry, UX Tweak, IconSet, and many others. So that is a super fast summary of some of the significant things that we've seen happen in UX and product design this year. But what about the future of UX? Even with all of these things happening, there are even more fascinating things on the horizon. Emerging tech like Web3 and dApps built on the blockchain are opening up all sorts of possibilities and opportunities and challenges for designers and teams. As our information becomes more decentralized, there is a lot to consider in the realm of user experience. Extended reality and immersive experiences like AR and VR introduce spatial depth and contextual design considerations like never before. 
the fantastical possibilities yet to develop in the metaverse. Cryptocurrency, DeFi, and wallet experiences continue to be imagined and refined. NFTs, AI and automation, and learning how we can integrate them into our work to make our mundane processes easier. Gaming and game design becoming even more immersive, more sustainable business practices and business models, intentional and inclusive design practices, political and social tech, satellite and space tech, deeper localization and personalization of content, remote working in virtual spaces, and gestural interfaces and voice command design. I'll be doing another video on emerging tech, so look out for that. I also predict many more niche communities for designers for those that want to connect more deeply in some of these specific areas. Online education I expect will continue to evolve as well and become even more affordable and accessible. Leadership transformation has been happening already and I see that continuing as a trend into the future with more transparency of business practices and more business acumen of designers. And that's just scratching the surface. There's so much incredible innovation that's happening all around us and faster than we might think. These technologies will be in our hands before we know it, and the need for designers to make them more accessible and user-friendly and mindful are increasing by the day. So hopefully this video has illuminated some great resources that you can add to your toolkit and your journey as a UX, UI, or product designer. My advice is get the fundamentals down, keep learning, keep listening, keep seeking to understand each other and keep challenging yourself and you will be rewarded with a long fulfilling career in design and tech. I just want to close with a sincere thank you for this incredible year. 23,000 plus of you have subscribed to this channel. I've gotten hundreds of kind and supportive comments and more students than I can handle. I'm truly grateful and I'm really excited to see what we all do together next year. This is Elizabeth from Designer Up signing off. I'll see you in the next one.